Okay, so I want to go over a follow-up video on my variables and assignments, and this one is going to be dealing with mostly non-numeric data types. We're going to go over characters and strings, even though strings technically aren't a data type, more on that in a bit. And then we'll also go into how to actually print data out for the user, and then also take input from the user. So I'm going to hop on over and take a look. So again, we're gonna look at the reserve keywords here. Previously, we had int, float, and double. We'll take a look at those again briefly in a moment. But for this one, we're gonna focus on char. And again, you'll see that string is technically not here. Now, there is a reason but you'll know things are going to be known as strings when it comes to printing data out they're going to be called string literals even though they aren't in a data type and they also don't have a reserve keyword they have their own entire library which we'll go over that in a bit as well but it's essentially going to be how to print out and deal with non-numeric data but again just more on that in a bit so characters you'll know them as chars it's a data type it's a very small numeric data type that we use to store letters now i just said that we're dealing with non-numeric data types and now we see that chars are a data type that is numeric but they're numeric in how they are structured in the compiler and at low level but when it comes to programming and using them you're not necessarily using them for the actual numeral aspect. You're using them for what you see over here on the right. So we use a character literals. You're going to surround them with a single quote. That's why you see them all like so over here on the right. We have char var1 equals single quotes F, char var2, single quotes capital M, a 6, the next one, and then ampersand for the last one. So, they are numeric. These all correlate to some numeral value. And you might know this as ASCII. You've ever heard of that? So, internally, chars are stored as numeric values similar to how integers are. They are a much, much smaller data type. I think it's a single byte. Essentially, we can have up to 255. Yeah, so they range 0 to 255. And that's all we can have. Now, the ones that we care about, though, are what you see over here. So we have some special characters, space, exclamation mark, quotations, hash, dollar sign, percent sign, ampersand, etc., etc. Then we have our actual numerical data, 0 through 9. We have capital letters, A through Z. We have lowercase letters, A through Z. And then we have a few more special characters here and there. These ones being more like math operators. And then these also being some relational operators. So there's a lot going on here, but essentially every time you do say, let's just kind of get rid of some of this and give me some space. So char, I'm just going to do var1 equals, let's do equals. This is essentially setting var1 equal to 61 as a number. Now, whenever it deals with a character, it will associate this number with the appropriate ASCII data. So whenever it tries to print it, it will print out the equal sign. Now, one pretty cool thing you can do is let's say you're taking in uh, some strings, some non -nu actual non-numeric data from a user, something like that. And you're getting passed in, say, the character nine. Well, we get the character nine Actually, you know what? Let's do the character zero first. So zero first. 
and we want to use this as the actual value zero because currently what we have is not zero we actually have the value of 48 because that's how it's encoded well what we can do is let's say that this is do this oh, oh. char letter equals zero well if i do int number equals letter minus zero then what's going to happen is we're going to have letter which we know as a number is going to be 48 we have 48 minus the encoding of zero which again is 48 48 minus 48 gives this number as the actual number value of zero so conversely here if we did say one let's just do one because you can see it so 49 so we do the actual value character is one a letter is one which is 49 minus again zero because it is the lowest limit here that we care about then we have 49 minus 48 which gives us the actual numeral value of one and this will work for any number you can see again if we do nine here the highest one then we would have 57 minus 48 which gives us the number of nine so if you ever want to convert the character of a number to the actual number itself then you can just subtract the character zero because of how the ascii encoding works so if you need to transform a character then if you look at the relation between them then it shouldn't be too bad another way of doing this would be if we want to transform a uppercase number to a lowercase number let's try converting our up equals capital B and we know that this is going to be 66 so one thing we can do is we need a number we need the lower limit difference here so it's pretty easy doing numbers to 48 because we're actually going to the value of zero but with this we need to do a little bit different so if we did say hmm int diff and we set that equal to let me just do this and if equals I want is this I want a minus capital A this will give me 97 minus 65 which is 32 we have a difference of 32 which means that our diff will be 32 just keep that in mind so we could do is let's say we want to do we have an a a char letter it goes a all right if we want to transform that to lowercase we can just do letter equals letter plus oh i'm not going to actually use dip as a variable here i just kind of want to show how that worked you could just do 32 as the actual number here there are built-in functions that can do this for you but i mean that may be built in it may actually it's through a library that you'd have to use but if you actually want to manually do it, you can just add or subtract, depending on which way you're going, the value of 32, because that is a difference between our letters. So again, if we want to transform 
B, which is 66, and we want to transform that uppercase, we do that plus 32, which gives us a value of 98, giving us a lowercase b. So if we want to transform, we just set the letter equal to itself, plus 32, if we want to go to lowercase, and if we want to go to uppercase, then we would subtract the value of 32. So again, this is showing that yes, at the end of the day, internally, characters are numbers, and they are encoded via this ASCII key. Now, there is a link here to an extended version of it, and there's a lot more that you can see, but again, this is the main aspect of all this over here. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, moving on. We also have escape sequences. So the reason we need this is because there's no way to create a character for say a new line, which is like pressing enter when you're in Microsoft Word or text editor and it goes to the next line. That creates a new line character. Same thing if you press tab, that is actually a tab character. And then if we need to do quotes and double quotes, well, those are used in actually identifying characters and identifying strings. So we can't freely put those in a character or a string. So we use an escape sequence so it makes sure, hey, don't read this as a identifier for a character or a string. Use this as the actual character itself. Same thing here for doing a backslash because a backslash is what we use for identifying escape sequences. So it identifies itself as well. So this is needed specifically because the compiler can get confused if we don't do it because we have unintended behavior. So if you need to do new lines, tabs, quotes, double quotes, backslashes, etc., make sure it has a preceding backslash, you'll be fine. So Finally, we get to strings. Now, strings, very important. However, while strings exist as their own data type, in many other languages, C does not have strings of its own. What it actually has are character sequences. And technically, yes, strings are character sequences in other languages, but the way that C handles it is they are technically character arrays. So that's why you see this kind of nomenclature here. We'll touch on that in a second. So, it only exists as our own unique data type, but we can still create string literals by wrapping characters in double quotes like this one. So, double quote, word, double quote. Same thing here. I have the string literal of hello ending in a new line character wrapped in double quotes. So, when it prints out, it'll print out hello. And then it'll go down to the next character, or next line. And the next one will print out goodbye. Well, if I was going to actually print out. So it would be like this. And then another new line character. Now, this is technically an array, and we will touch on arrays a good bit later. But the way that this is, it looks like a look at the nuances here, is like we said previously, they don't have their own data type. They're constructed by character arrays and will always end, or technically should always end unless you like are doing something weird. By default, they will. It will end in a null character, which is going to be slash zero. So if we actually look at this string literal here, hello, what we're actually looking at is an individual count of all the different letters in the sequence. So at position zero, because we're always gonna start counting at zero and whatnot, more on that later. Then we have H, then one is E, two is L, three is L, four is zero, and then we have a fifth character, technically a sixth character, again starting at zero. That is a null character. So we're gonna to touch more on this later but this is kind of the internal looking at how strings work. Now, we're just going to move on and we'll come back to this when it becomes a bit more necessary. So, why we want to care about strings is when we print out, we must have string literals. So you kind of need to know the inner workings of how well they operate. So for printing, in C, we can use the printf function 
from the standard input output h library that I've talked about before to display anything to the user. So to print variables, we would need to use what's known as a format specifier, such as the following percent %d for integers and percent %f for floats. Now, if we take a look at the code that you see at the bottom, you'll notice I have float decimal equals 0 0.5. I have integer percent equals 50. So when I print F, I'm going to have double quote to start it. This begins the string literal of the print F. And then I have a format specifier for percent D. You see that this is necessary for integers. Then I have percent percent. I'm going to touch on that in a second, but it is a format specifier for printing the percent sign, similar to how when you do escape earlier, you had a backslash backslash, so it would identify itself. Same details here, you'll see it in a bit. It's the same as percent %f, which is a format specifier for floats, and then I have a new line character, and then finally I end my double quote. So percent %d percent percent is the same as percent %f slot backslash n is my string. That is the string literal that would be being print to the console or the terminal or whatever or the user. Now, what percent %d what, what is this? It's it's useless. We don't we don't care about that. We don't care about percent %f. We care about printing out these variables. So we're going to read left, right. So percent %d, there's my first format specifier, and it comes across percent %d. It's going to identify this needs an integer. It is a variable, and it's going to see, hey, this is the first one because I have a list here. So it has percent. And it's going to take that 50. And basically, you're going to get 50. And it's going to go left to right. Percent, percent, the percent sign, well, that's not a variable. That's not a variable, we don't care about that. We just know, hey, I'm percenting percent, good to go. 50% is the same as percent %f, next format specifier, we have an f, that's for floats. Go to our next variable in our list, decimal, 0 0.5. That's so the same as 0 0.5. When this prints out, what I'm gonna get is 50%, it's the same as 0 0.5. And then again, it's gonna to wrap to a new line character. Now, the way that this is working, when we read left to right, when we do print F, it takes in essentially a list of items. The first one is the actual string that you are going to print. And that begins with your double quote, and then ends your double quote, and then you have a comma. So I have two formats specifier, percent %d, percent %f, that need variables. So that means I need to have two variables, placeholders essentially, in my list. So I have percent integer for my percent %d, and I have decimal, which is a float, my percent %f. But so prints out just fine. It's a little bit convoluted, but hopefully it's not too bad. A little bit of practice should get you up and running just fine. But next, instead of outputting to the system, we want to take input from the system, or from the user specifically. So very similar to print f for output, we also have the scan f function. Same format specifiers are used here, but we need to add an ampersand to the beginning of each variable. And that is because we are looking at the reference to them of their memory location. So we're just gonna actually look, hey, I'm looking for variable one. I'm not looking at the actual variable data. I am looking for wherever it is in memory so we can set it. The exception of this is a stream because those are arrays. And they are what is known as pointers in their own case. Again, we're going to get to that good bit later, but for now, shouldn't be too bad. So what we have here is initializing a variable, that's an integer, so we have int bar one. Then we have scan f, it's gonna take string literal. Typically you just want a single format specifier, you can do some different things, but be careful on this. This we just, percent %d is a format specifier for an integer. And then we have ampersand var one. So we have 
an integer for our format specifier. The variable is variable one or var one, which is indeed an integer. So we're good there. And then we're just going to type something into the terminal console, whatever we're typing in, hit enter. And then if I was typing a five, then it's going to set var one to five. All right. So we do print F, then we have our string literal with the double quotes. Percent D was your input slash N. My format specifier is an integer. Bar one is an integer. Bar one was set to five by the user. But now, print out five was your input. That's about it. Now, real quick, there is one page here that has a list of all your common format specifiers. So the most common ones that we cared about today, percent D, percent F or float. So print to read a decimal integer value, print to reads a floating point or a float floating point value. Now we have percent C if we want characters, we have uh, some more complicated stuff like HD, LD, LLD. These are for shorts, long, long, longs are different types of numeric data types. I'll touch on those next video. And then you have these percent use, which I'll say unsigned again, that's next video. And then you also have LF, which is for double, which technically stands for long float, which is more like these two right here. And then also have percent S. You notice it has a large block here because this is for the quote unquote data type of a string, which we know doesn't actually exist. So print F will print the contents of a string, string literal or character array up to the null character. But that's what happens when you print F. We are printing up to the null character at the end of the string literal, which is where this slab backslash zero would be. So printing up to that null character right here. Now, for scanf, it works a little bit differently. Scanf will read a string of characters from the user input until a white space character, which is a space, tab, or new line is reached. So if you were going to say, hey, take input from the user like we did on the last slide, then if you want to say, hello world, and set that to a string, or character array essentially, and you did scan F on this, you wouldn't get hello world. You would get hello. It's gonna hit this, this space here, and then it's gonna cut. Now there are ways you can get around this. A little bit convoluted, but we're not gonna touch on that right now because it's just a little bit more complex than it needs to be right now. And then finally, yeah, percent percent after this is not taking in a variable of any kind. It's not gonna need it for the list or anything. You just do percent percent and it knows, hey, this is format specifier of itself. So again, the reason you need this is if you were to try and print out something, then if you were to do 50%, what's gonna happen, the compiler is going to read this get to this percent sign, look for the next character, and it's going to treat where the next character is as a format specifier to pull the actual variable to it appropriately. It's not gonna find that. So what you have to do is just do percent percent. So it reads it left to right, so five, zero, good. Percent sign, that's format specifier. What's the next character? Another percent sign, all right skip it just print percent you're good it's just trying to treat it as the actual character without breaking things so just keep that in mind and you should be good now that's basically all i have for characters and strings and again printing and scanning from user input but overall there's a good bit going on here especially dealing with ASCII values, dealing with the fact that strings are technically not actual data types, but there's something called arrays. We haven't really touched on that yet, but that will come eventually. But for now, we only want to touch on strings because we need to know how to print data to the user and then take input from the user. So that is why we need to go ahead and touch on 
the difference between characters and strings and all the different workings of how it works, format specifiers. There's a lot going on, but overall, it's really not too, too bad. So, again, I do hope all this made sense, and I hope you learned something. And then I hope I see you next video.